Hey, hey, it works. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Coffee. Hey, Coffee. Coffee with Tim. All right, good morning. My little remote control actually worked for the first time in many moons, and so we're happy about that. Uh, this morning, I'm in the command center. As you can see, we're still in Central Point, Oregon at Mother-in-Law's house. And just a short update on, on what we're doing here. Of course, you know we live in RV, and we are sowers at heart. But we're sowers who are parked for repairs. And the repairs are going slowly. There's progress, but it's slow progress, okay? Uh, Mom put in this wonderful RV pad for us with water hookups, which were unprotected from the weather. So this week we have got them winterized so that no freezing would not be a problem to her pipes that would break in a freeze. So we're happy about that. We've made some phone calls, got some appointments, got some information, and we're just waiting for the appointments to come to, come to pass, to come to fruition, if you will. So that's our update. And we're uh, this week we had a great visit, a uh, three-hour lunch with our sower friends, Steve and, oh, I got to move the camera. There we go. Come over here. Steve and Sharon Armstrong, yes, uh, they live in Grants Pass. They were on our very first project. We met them. They were our group leaders. They're the ones that brought us in and, and kind of began to build the foundation of a sower life for us. And they watched the video. How you guys doing? Anyway, they contacted us, and uh, they're just about a half hour away. So we went for, for lunch this week and had a great uh, catch-up reunion and uh a great lunch together with them. So we're excited about that. That was a good deal, right? Uh, and that's all the thing that I know about to catch up on. Now, I want to tell you a couple things about this morning. I had a revelation, if you will. Not quite like John, but I had a revelation. So every morning I sit down, I've told you before, I like to tabernacle. I have this blanket that I wrap around my body and over my head like a hood and I sit in the cold while the temperatures begin to warm up, and I have a cup of coffee, right? I have a little table, a little cup of coffee, and I begin, to, I begin my quiet time, and I begin by sharing my heart with the Lord, just whatever's on my heart, just share that with the Lord, and then I follow up that with my reading in my Bible app. I've told you this, but I had a revelation today, so I'm sitting down with my table and my coffee, and I begin to realize... The Coffee with Tim. You all join me. Those of you who watch, join me for Coffee with Tim. But every, and I'm going to cry, every morning, Jesus joins me for Coffee with Tim. He's awake every morning, waiting for me to get up. And I come out, I make my coffee, I sit down. And he joins me for Coffee with Tim. So Coffee with Tim takes on a whole new dimension when I, when I realized that I'm having coffee with Jesus, actually. Jesus is having coffee with Tim. And it's, that's incredibly cool. I encourage you to have a, a coffee with you and Jesus in the morning every day. He's been doing it for years. I didn't even know that he was joining me for coffee. Uh, but he was. He's been joining me for coffee for years. And it's, uh, it's awesome. That's just an awesome uh, little thing. So... <laughs> encourage you to have your own coffee with Jesus every morning. Okay, a couple things on my mind uh, this morning. I've been reading again in, in Kings. We come back into 1 Kings and 2 Kings. And we're reading about the history of the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah. At this point in time, Israel has been separated into the northern kingdom with up ten tribes and the southern kingdom with two tribes. And uh, this, the lineage of David is with Judah and, and Jerusalem, and the other kings have broken away. And the very first king of Israel began this pattern of, of compromise. And they built a false temple. They made false golden calves. They changed the place to worship God from Jerusalem at the, where the ark and the temple were to a false place, and they begin to worship all the gods of the neighboring nations as well. And so there's a huge compromise. Again, thou shalt have no other, uh, not, no idol before me. Uh, so they begin to break God's commandments and give their heart away to other places. And every king, 
virtually every single king after that first one in Israel did the same thing, did evil. And sometimes it says did worse than their fathers. It began a pattern of worse and worse and worse. Now, on the other hand, the kings of Judah, uh, sometimes they were evil and sometimes they were good. But even the good kings compromised. Sometimes they would uh, destroy the, the Baal worshippers and the places, but they would leave uh, false compromising God worship around. Until we get to the king of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah is an awesome dude. I haven't finished reading his story again. But he is the one, it says that he was, did the best, he was the best king before and after. No one was better than Hezekiah because he didn't compromise. He tore down all the false places of worship and, and he cleaned house completely. And it says he, he loved God with all of his heart. He served God with all of his heart. And he made mistakes, but, but as far as his dedication to purity and no compromise, he was the guy. And so as I read about that, I think about our church, and I think about Christians. And, and there's a lot of Christians, a lot of you out there, who have compromise in your life. I struggle sometimes with compromise. As much as I feel like I'm all in for Jesus, and, and I, there are still places where there's a little bit of compromise. And the Lord exposes that to me, and I need to deal with that. Well, the Lord is dealing with you, with your compromise. But what happens is if you don't respond to what God is showing you about things you need to change in your life, then what you're doing is you're hardening your heart. You're hardening your heart toward the Lord. And, and it's the same thing as the kings of Israel. If you, don't, if, you, if you allow compromise and don't correct it, you get a hardened heart and you get worse. You get more compromise. Uh, you get more sin. At the end of the day, you're hurting yourself because you're the one that's going to suffer loss of reward. You're the one that's going to suffer bad consequences as God has to bring pressure upon you and you reap what you have sown and it's not going to be good for you. And so you're wasting time. You're wasting time. And if you come to your senses someday and you find that place of repentance and you get a soft heart and you bend your knee, and you begin to deal with that compromise. You'll find that it's 5, 10, 20 years later. And you wasted so much time that God had given you. I could testify. That's me. I was a waster. I, did, I resisted places in my life for years. And, and the compromise that I, I wouldn't deal with. Uh, so I just encourage you as one who regrets a lot of the waste that he's had. That don't harden your heart to where God points a finger at your life showing you places of compromise. Where you've compromised with the world, you've compromised with your own flesh, where you've compromised with the devil, and you're not fully pure. Stop now. Bend your knee. Correct the problem. Submit to the Holy Spirit, agree with God, and deal with the compromise. And as I say that, I heap condemnation on myself if I don't do that. But that's the truth. Don't compromise. You see it in the patterns of the kings of Israel. And it's, it's the natural, unfortunately, it's the natural thing to want to, to compromise and protect that compromise. It's the supernatural thing. To respond to the Holy Spirit and deal with the problem and cut it out. Destroy. He smashed the bales and bound them to pieces. In fact, the, the Israel, they were worshiping that bronze serpent that Moses held up. Here it is, hundreds of years later. Moses held this up in the desert. And it's a type of Christ. Look to him and be saved. Uh, you're being attacked by poisonous snakes. And the only way you can be uh, freed from that. Uh, have the poison not affect you is to look to Jesus on the cross or look to the serpent on the pole. And they started worshiping the, the bronze image instead of the creator, right? So uh, even that, he destroyed that, art, that artifact because it was an idol. It was distracting from the true worship and the true response. 
So that's what's been on my heart as I read Kings. I see, I see the compromise, and all, judgment's coming, right? Judgment was coming to Israel, and judgment came to Judah for their sin. And it just didn't come right away. God was patient, hoping that there would be repentance. God was patient. He let the sin build up and build up until the wrath came, until the judgment came. And that's what's going to happen in your life. Don't let it build up to the point where the wrath comes, where the judgment comes. Repent now. Repentance. And that's the other thing. I'm reading in Acts, this other part of my thing. I, I read Paul's great speech. He call, he, he's headed back to Jerusalem where he's going to, uh, he knows chains and prisons coming for him. He knows this, but he wants to fulfill the mission God's given to him. So he, he, he's in a hurry. He wants to get to Jerusalem before uh, Pentecost, I think it was. And so he stops in Miletus. He doesn't go into Ephesus because he knows that will delay him. He calls the Ephesian leaders to the shore, to Miletus, and he gives a great conversation of blessing with them in which he, he says that he did not withhold preaching the whole counsel of God. And specifically, repentance toward God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those were the two building blocks of what Paul had to tell everybody. Repentance toward God and faith in Jesus Christ. And that's what I have been proclaiming to you. I hope you respond. I hope you respond. I pray that you respond to that call. Christian, if you're living and you got compromise, heed the warning. Cut the compromise out. Soften your heart. Bend your knee. Repent. The same call to you, non-Christian. Judgment's coming. Judgment is coming. And will you receive forgiveness? Will you receive Jesus Christ? Will you turn your heart toward God? That's what we're asking for you to do. All right, uh, friends, coffee heads. I kept it down a little bit. There's so much change going on right now in our life. Uh, Kelsey, uh, Les's daughter, has come to visit at a spur of the moment. And there's some reconciliation happening and some other issues happening. Uh, Aunt Janet, who was supposed to come back and live here until almost Christmas, is coming back next week. So there's lots of cheese. i got so many women around me here. I'm the only guy uh, around. And so there's just a whirlwind of stuff going on here. So uh, just continue, please. Thank you all for, for praying for us and our, and our repairs and our things. And, and I need just a little bit of extra grace because i got so many women around me that, uh, that need my love, I guess. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's my, that's my little Coffee with Tim video. I appreciate you all. And, and we'll see you, Lord willing, next week. And so in the meantime, uh, that, 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 that is all, folks. Or, no, it's not all. Okay. All right. Love you guys. Stay in touch. I appreciate that so much. Peace.